chapter seven, there's like 28 slides for this, right? This is the bulk of the class. Energy balance should be easy, right? Conceptually, it should be easy too. Entropy, it's a different type of thing. I'm talking about vibrational modes, I'm talking about states. I'm talking about something that always has to increase, right? It, it, it's much more complicated. The test is supposed to be mainly at seven and eight. It's gonna be seven and eight, but you have to be able to do energy balance. You just saw in that last example, when I solved for the entropy generated and I finally got a final answer, I had to use something that I already solved for from energy balance, right? I had an expression for Q out in terms of workout. But you, you do entropy balance, Right, that gives you one equation. Do energy balance, that gives you another equation. Sometimes you have two equations and two unknowns you combine the two to get an answer. Right. Of course you can do mass balance, that gives you a third equation. Right. You can do other things like this. But So second law, entropy and its applications. We already talked about heat engines or refrigerators. Right, so refrigerator is red, work in cools my steak, rejects to the house, right? Works in a cycle. Heat engine, right? Produces workout based off a high temperature source and a low temperature sink, works in a cycle. So volcano, ocean, heat engine, workout, right? I use the constant temperature of the ocean, I use the constant temperature of a volcano, I devise some system that takes the heat from both, or takes heat and rejects the heat and then divides it so I can get work out based upon nature, right? Nature provided oceans of constant temperature. Of course, they're not really constant, but relative to a small device us humans can make, they're constant temperature. Okay, so reversible engine, right? Less efficient than a re reversible one. Re irreversible refrigerator yeah, has a lower coefficient performance. And we, so we talked about coefficient and so just as another refresher, thermal efficiency is one minus QL over QH. And we know that QL has to be less than QH. And so we can go to the Carnot efficiency of a reversible process. And when I do that, I can this goes to TL over TH. And so in this case, it's the Carnot efficiency of a reversible process. In this case, QL can be just transformed into TL and QH can be transformed. So I already talked about a diesel engine, right? So, okay, our car operates in the surroundings. Let's just say our car doesn't heat up Florida. Florida's hot already, right? Our car is not really heating it up. So I can look at the temperature of my surroundings, right? The engine's hotter than, right? And then I can have the temperature of my engine. So I want to just really quickly know whether a diesel engine is more efficient, going to be more efficient than a gasoline engine. All I need to do is look at what the temperature at which the engine's operating, and I know that a diesel engine operates at a higher temperature than a gasoline engine. Therefore, it has an up higher upper limit Carnot thermal efficiency. So right away you know that you, if you want to have the most efficient engine, you're best off starting off with a diesel type process because that combustion reaction happens at a higher temperature, so you're gonna have a higher upper limit efficiency, right? You're making it harder to start with a gasoline engine. You're making life more difficult. Not that you can't do it, because this is an upper limit, but you're just starting off with you know more obstacles. So Carnot efficiency, good thing to calculate, right? To give you an upper limit efficiency on any process, right? That deals with heat transfer. So thermal efficiency, if the thermal efficiency is less than the Carnot, reversible, if it's equal, Carnot reversible, and if it's, so I can, 
do, just do this. Thermal efficiency, if it's less than that, that means it's an irreversible heat engine, right? Thermal efficiency. If it's equal, that means I have a reversible heat engine. And if it is greater than this, that means it's impossible. So if you calculate the thermal efficiency of your system and it ends up being greater than what your calculated Carnot thermal efficiency is, you know you just made some major errors. It can't happen. It has to be less than or equal to. So when you do a calculation, you wouldn't put in TH. You would be, you would be using the first and second law to get expressions or calculate QL and QH, right? You could do energy balance or create the work out and then equate the work out to the heat, right? For, to the heat in. So you could do energy balance to get an expression for this. You could do energy balance to get expression for that, or you could do energy and entropy balance to get expressions, right? Couple, and then you would calculate it here, and then just based off temperatures or reservoirs, you can calculate that. But nevertheless, so if you, you tell you you did something wrong in your calculation, or you did something wrong in your engineering, you forgot to include something, right? That was elemental because you're going to start off doing something impossible. So you can see as an engineer that calculations on thermal efficiencies and Carnot th are, are good benchmarks before you start to get your hands dirty, right? So thermodynamics gives you some, it's like, hey, I better stop and stop turning the wrench because, or telling the machinist to make this because something's wrong. <laughs> because I'm already projected to violate, right? Some laws of thermodynamics. So I can go through these with a Carnot refrigerator, oh, they're not that. But I can do the same thing for a Carnot refrigerator for or the reversible case. And all I'm doing is replacing QHs with PHs. Right, so then I just replace these. So I have PH <coughs> over PL minus one. So I can do the same thing, right? I can calculate the actual coefficient of performance, and then I can calculate the upper limit coefficient of performances. So in these expressions, I would be able to get an expression or a calculated value based off of using energy balance, right? Do energy balance, I have heat in minus heat out. I get, I get an expression, right? I can simplify it and get a number for QH. I can maybe uh, with that energy balance I end up having both QH and QL so then I need another equation to separate the two because I have one equation and two unknowns so then I do entropy balance and then I have two equations and two unknowns and then by doing that I'll get a value for the coefficient of performance of my actual system and then if I want to know the upper limit I can simply look at the temperature of my reservoir. So this I've already talked about, I've already drawn similar diagrams. So entropy, big S, small s, I've already talked about it. Entropy being an extensive property. So extensive meaning it's additive, but when I divide by mass, it no longer, like if I do small s, it becomes intensive. So it's no longer independent of volume. Big S depends on size, aka volume, mass, 
so independent. I divide by mass, right? So it has to be independent of mass, right? Independent of volume mass. So entropy units kilojoules per kilogram. So if I look at this, it's defined equal integral delta Q over T, so I already magically know. Joules, Kelvin, joules per Kelvin. Units, okay, I'm dividing by mass. So I just did this here, but this is S2 minus S1. So this is my entropy at state two. This is my entropy at state one. If I want to know the change in entropy from going from state one to state two, okay, that's the change in entropy in this case from going from state one to state two. Right? And then what is this? It's the equal to integral from one to two dq over t okay so if I just look at this okay I have state one state one it's the state of the system defined by temperature and pressure right or two intensive properties right it's a state so I have temperature one t one this is state two <coughs> So in this case, delta S is not the area under the curve, right? So this integral does not, so this does not re represent an area under curve in here, right? I'm just equating this point with this point, the difference, so just, just the projection, this difference follows this. So I could redo this diagram and I could plot Q over 1 over T, right? And then when I do that type of integral, I would end up getting an area under the curve which would represent delta S. But in this case, I don't have it like that. So I have some T1, T2. And so if I take a process like this, I go from state 1 to state 2. I have these two states. I know the change in entropy. So, okay, so I just did that. I go from state one to state two. State two is a higher temperature than state one. And the entropy is more. Okay, so this is a process where I go from one state to the next. And in that process, the entropy increased. That doesn't mean it's a violation, right, of the second law, because the entropy increased. But what it automatically means is I had to do, someone else external had to do some work to increase the entropy of the system. Right? Or it had, or it was some natural process, right? But the opposite direction, okay? Because the entropy goes from a higher entropy to a lower, okay? Now, if I try to follow the same path back, that means I have a reversible process. And in that case, S2, right? So now when I look at my delta, now I've decreased the entropy. So, so that would be something that wouldn't be a natural process. That, well, no, it's not a natural process. Because something has to actively be done. To decrease the entropy of the system. So I can decrease the entropy of something, but I have to do work on it. Natural, so this could be a natural process. To go against the natural process, you have to do some work. That work could be with some extraction of heat, right? You'd have to do some work to suck heat out. You'd have to make something to suck the heat out and transfer it to an ocean, right? You have to make a device to do that. So this could be, may or may not be a natural process from one to two. But we know that from two to one is not a natural process, right? Because the entropy tends towards an increase. Yes? So with this, it doesn't apply then that it's going clockwise. Bias. No, there's nothing. There's so nothing related to that, okay. right? So this area is related to heat, right? The heat transferred. So 
So if I write out the tedious, tedious question, right? Q equals E yes. Okay. So just by looking at this, I have F, I have T as a function of S. The temperature as a function of entropy. Okay. It's usually the other way around, but you can make it you can make a you know, inverse function. You remember from mathematics that you can define a function f and then make its inverse function. Okay, complicated mathematics, so you can see it's going to be probably pretty complicated with this maybe too. Nevertheless, but you can see here that when I do this, and then I can take the integral, right, of this side. So really this is a delta q. And anyways, take this and I get total q. So the area under the curve represents heat transfer. So there is a clockwise, counterclockwise aspect in terms of the direction of heat transfer. But if I follow the same path there and back, that means I have a cycle. What, and what then, then there's no, it's all reversible heat. Because there's no area under the curve from the cycle. What I say was if you follow the, the red arrows, the direction of it doesn't mean anything. Well, it does. Um, I, I, it does, but I, I've, I went through it in my head and I've got it wrong. I've come up with two different things. So. I don't want to give you a nice analogy with counterclockwise means heat in and counterclockwise means heat out. Yeah, but I was just thinking as far as work. In terms of work, no. This All has right. to, this in terms of here, well, I guess we could look at it, but I mean, I so TDS, I mean, I'm pretty sure that clockwise means I'm pretty sure that this means heat in or net heat out, actually. No, net heat in. So if it ends up being clockwise, it's net in heat in, and if it's counterclockwise, it's net heat out for the cycle. But I, we don't need to know that. Well, I'm not gonna. I, I don't have a nice rule of thumb because I've when I went and did this with work, it was nice to say clock, clockwise this, counterclockwise this for work on and work by. But when I went to do it with this, I I did it two different times and came up with the opposite answers. So I don't want to go ahead and do it and give me the do it yourself, right? But nevertheless, the area do does represent the heat transfer, right? And if I go from here to here, so that's a cycle, and there's no area, that means it was all reversible heat. So the same thing applies with delta U for a cycle, right? For a cycle, the change in internal energy is equal to zero, right? Because I'm right back at the same state. So just like for a cycle, if I go up here and I come back, the entropy of my system after the cycle for each cycle is equal the change in entropy is equal to zero because I'm right back at the same state. It's not a cycle if you don't end up back at the same state. But you might have some irreversible heat, and then this definitely, this area represents irreversible heat. So I, I just wrote here. So these TS diagrams are used throughout the rest of the book to describe you know, how efficient processes are. So here we're getting some information on the irreversible heat. So we know that this is some heat loss, so we can calculate efficiencies from that, right? Or when you just do this and you follow the path of the system, you can write out all the different states and you know if you can get a zero area under here, that's probably a good thing, right? Because you're, you're following the same path and you're not having any, you have no area. So that means it was all reversible heat. Of course, you can't really do this, so I kind of made the red line. I, I tried to make one of the lines kind of wavy, but anyways. So, okay, so related to this, there's, they start off in the book and they talk about the Clausius inequality. This kind of gets confusing, and a part of me wants to say that don't do it because it ends up putting something that looks like this. So, so if the cyclic, cyclic integral of delta Q over T. So if you look at this, this is very, very similar to what you memorized, right? For the second law, delta S, but now it's less than equal to zero. And so, so it, it gets kind of confusing. Um, 
I'm going to go through an example of how this works. So it, it turns out that sometimes in mathematics, when you prove something, you do it to prove that the answer can exist, and then you get, a pro you get an answer. So that means it can exist. And so in here, you go to prove that this happens. So that means the entropy always has to increase. But anyways, it's, it's a classic inequality. Um, Ramification, the simple way of looking at it is delta Q over T. This is our tedious. That my, you know, differential change in entropy follows, right, my differential heat transfer over a, re a totally reversible reservoir temperature. So in here, the amount of heat absorbed by the system from a reservoir, T, the temperature of the external reservoir that, that at that particular instant. So system, right, operating in a cycle. I have a reservoir. Say I have some heat. I have another reservoir. Let's not worry, it can be work in or out. Let's not worry too much about that. But I have some reservoir. There is a temperature associated at some instant, and there's amount of heat associated with it. So I have some delta Q, the amount of heat absorbed by the system, right? So it works in a cycle. So if I look at this point versus that point, that point, and that point, my delta Q could be different, and my temperature of the external reservoir at that particular instant might be a little bit different. So I have these. And the Clausius inequality applies to both reversible and irreversible processes for an internally reversible cycle. I have delta Q over T internally reversible. What do you think it equals? Yeah, sir. So let's go back to these TQ diagrams or TS diagrams, and let's plot 1 over T. And so I have 1 over T1 and 1 over T2. And I have Q1 and Q2. And then I have state 1. I go to state two, I can take a different path back to state three and then back, right? So in this case, maybe I should have drawn Q over one over T, but either way is fine. So change in entropy delta S integral delta Q over T, which equals the integral from one to two Q over T plus the integral from 2 to 3, DQ over T plus dot, 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 right? And if I have a cycle, then I can replace all of this with that, right? Delta S cycle. And I know here this is going to be 1 to 2, DQ over T plus, let's just say I go from 1 to 2 and then back again from two to one. And so for a cycle, if I go in this type of format, right, this is calculating delta S. So now this delta S is related to areas. So I have this, and if it's equal to zero, I have a reversible. And if it's not equal to zero, I have an irreversible. So I, I changed the axes. I had T and S, and then we we're talking about heat. And now I have 1 over T and Q. So you change the axes, the area under the curve has a different meaning, right? 
and so I just change things around. And now, if I go from one to two and back again and the net area is zero, that means I have a reversible cycle. And we already saw that once I follow the same path back to its initial state, no matter if I'm looking at a PV diagram, basically if I'm looking at almost any diagram, it's a reversible process when I'm using one in 1071 extensive property of the system, right? But, or it doesn't even have to be a property of the system, it could be the energy added, right? Or removed from a system. So, and then I can go different ways, and then so if I were to take a path like this, the area would have a different meaning, right? In terms of the entropy. And I guess I could look at it, so if I go from here to here, right, I have, and then if I go back again, I have this area up here, right? And then it's counterclockwise. And so that means that my delta S is negative, right? So the entropy decreased. Well, that means I had to, right? The entropy decreased. It's already know all I have to do is look at a PV diagram. And I know that, you know, it's going to be work on the system, right? Because I decreased the entropy for a cycle. Likewise, if I go from here to here and then take some path back, then I have some positive, right? Then delta S is positive. It doesn't necessarily mean that there was work input, right? The other case we know, right, to decrease the entropy over a cycle, right? Or to have this delta S, some area like that, we had to do work on the system. So Q1 is the heat required to bring system to state one T one P one from absolute so when I did this I'm at state one state one has a ten, uh, defined I could say state one was absolute zero and then this Q1 would equal zero. But in principle, you have to bring the system to state one. So there's some heat associated with bringing the system to state one. And so when I draw it like this, Q1 represents the heat to bring the system to state one from absolute zero. And then Q2, right, or delta Q, however you want to lose. Heat required bring the system to state two, T two, P two from Look at this for cycle one to two and two to one. This is equal to zero. No area. So I already know that one to two dq over t equals minus integral of two to one dq over t. However, for cycle one to two and then two to three and then three to one. This delta Q over T does not equal zero. There's area. So there's area in the cycle path curve. I know I had to do some work or some work was done or there's some irreversible heat associated with it. So let's go back. Let's go back to the standard TS diagram. And I have state one, state two, and here I can go from one to two and then back along the same path and that re represents a reversible process. However, I can go one to two and then follow either one of these paths back and then these represent irreversible. <coughs> irreversible. 
decimal time. <coughs> so of course here I have S2, S1, T1, T2. Is it more common to have it this way where it's just T on the left side opposed to 1 over T? Yeah, only reason why I did 1 over T because in the because in that delta S integral, right, it's delta Q over T. Right, from what we remember, delta S of an isolated system is equal to delta Q over T. So of course, right, my differential is DQ, and then I have one over T function. So one over T is my function, which is a function of Q, right? And so then this inner one over T DQ, so if I plot DQ over one over T, then the integral tells me that. Just like PV diagram, right? So the work, right? Work on the system is equal to integral of PV. And so you always plot a PV diagram. And so here, you know, when I before I was doing not a PV diagram, I was doing a 1 over TQ diagram to tell me about. But that isn't used very much, right? You never will see that in engineering. I'm only doing that. So there's some commonality between the, what I wrote for the second law. Which one won't you see? You, you never see the, the Q over 1 over T curve. So. You never see that. This is what you see. So if you open up the book, you always see a TS diagram. Yeah, so you always see this. This is what you see. And in here is related to the, you know, the areas in here are related to heat. And so if I, I can transform this one around, right? And so I can use the tedious question. DQ is equal to T DS. So if I, you know, just like I had, so then I have from here, Q is equal to the integral of T DS. And just like I had P DV, where I had a P PV, PV, and then the area represented the work. And now I have Q, so I have T Yes, TS. Before I wanted the, so I did the 1 over T and DQ because I wanted to relate the area to the change in entropy. But in engineering, you just use this. So you're concerned with the reversible and the, the amount of irreversible work. You want to minimize that. So in a cycle, you minimize the area in the TS diagram. You know it's all reversible heat because there's no area under the curve. So if I follow here and I come back along the same path, I had heat exchange. Because when I go one to two, I have area under the curve. That means I had heat exchange. Right? I have an area from one to two. And then back again, I had area. But they're a counter of each other. So that just means that it was all reversible heat. Of course, there's always going to be some area in any process when I walk, go through a cycle because not everything you cannot it's impossible to have just purely reversible heat so you're always going to have some area and that tells you about the heat loss of the system once you know the heat loss you can calculate efficiencies and whatnot so delta s again just s2 minus s1 which equals the integral from 1 to 2 delta q over t and I'm going to just put internally reversible. Okay, this is just a reminder. I just want to point out that delta S, so delta S, S2 minus S1, is the same whether or not reversible or irreversible path has been taken. From state one to state two Back to right. 
So delta S is delta S. So I can do all that integral type thing, but delta S is just delta S. That's change in entropy between going to two states. It doesn't matter what, if I had a reversible, irreversible process, right? There's no under the, under the curve in this type of diagram, then we know automatically that it's a reversible process, right? There's no re reversible heat. So that'd be one to two and then back to one? Oh, yeah, it should be one, sorry. So what about Q, and I guess I've just been talking about delta Q internally reversible equals T ds. So Q internally reversible equals integral T ds one to two. So if I go to the first law, I got Q is equal to delta E minus W for a cycle. I have delta E is equal to zero, which implies that Q internally reversible is equal to the cyclic integral of T ds, but this is equal to zero, which implies that the work is equal to zero, right? So, I was just basically saying, there's no area under the curve. What is it with the work? I can go look at a PV diagram and I can calculate the area, but I don't need to. I can just write out the first law. I know I have a cycle, so I know this is zero. Do this. I know for internally reversible cycle system that there's no area under the curve. So then just applying that, I, I calculate that the, the work, there was no work done or by for an internally reversible cycle. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll pick up here next lecture.